Thank you, Dean Friedman. Um, I would like to, um, in particular, welcome the families of our inaugural class of the CUNY School of Medicine. Um, and I'm so glad that we were able to, to bring you all in from the beginning of the ceremony. I get it. You, what, seemed, what, what must have seemed a lifetime ago, seven years ago, you brought your sons and daughters to this school. Um, for some of you, it probably felt like a very alien place. And you hoped that as they proceeded in their education, they would grow more deeply connected to the values of your neighborhood and your family rather than alienated from those values. And I will tell you that having been with them for seven years and seen the, the care that the faculty and staff of this school has given them and seen how they have performed and developed under that care, that they are magnificent. And we are so deeply proud of each one of them. Chancellor Matros Rodriguez, Dean Friedman, members of the CUNY School of Medicine board, um, Dr. Zucker, Dr. Woodson, families. This is where I normally say graduates, but instead I will say doctors. Um, it is my great pleasure to offer my congratulations on this glorious day. It seems to me that only uh, a, a day or so ago, a similar online uh, celebration gathered. Um, for some of you, given what you've been through, what you've seen, what you've endured in the intervening weeks, it must seem like a lifetime. I can't begin to imagine what it has been like under the pressure of this COVID-19 virus to serve as a frontline responder in some of these hospitals, but it is you know, the very first um, admirable act of your public life of doctors in what we all anticipate to be a career full of heroic and admirable acts. You are the first class of the CUNY School of Medicine, and I imagine you will hear that today more times than you will be able to count. In fact, if somebody congratulates you without reminding you that you are the graduating class of the first class of the CUNY School of Medicine, make sure you remind them. Um, and I say that because as the graduating class, you have an opportunity and a responsibility to make sure that the transition of the values of what you learned in the classroom, what brought you to this school carries on in your lifetime. Someday, when 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 generations of CUNY School of Medicine doctors graduate, it should be possible for anyone who looks on the wall and see the diploma that you will have to look at that and understand the specific commitments that brought you to this place and the specific skills and competencies that you developed while you were here. And they should be able to identify in the way you practice medicine and the places where you serve and your willingness to resist the perverse incentives of our medical system and our insurance system and focus on the primary care needs of the most vulnerable members of our population. It should be possible without them even seeing your diploma to know that you're a graduate of the CUNY School of Medicine. And it is your job as pioneers, it is your opportunity as pioneers to establish that precedent, to be an example for all the classes that will come after you, to set a standard that we will require them to live up to, to tell the world that when they bring you into a healthcare setting, they are bringing in someone with specific skills and specific commitments. We know we have known not just through the work of this medical school, but through the work of our sociology department and health economists in our Colin Powell School and journalists in our journalism program, that the existing medical system in the United States is not fair, has not been fair for a long time. We know, um, looking at the work of Linda Villarosa, that uh, the, the disparities between African-American women um, in maternity wards, the, the morbidity rates that separate them from, from others in society are astronomical. 
We know that if you're an African-American man in the American South suffering with HIV AIDS, your health outcomes resemble more the outcomes of the general population in the 1980s than what we should expect in the second decade of the 21st century. And we know throughout the examination of condition after condition that there is a systematic difference between what you can expect um, from your healthcare providers if you are uh, Latinx or African-American or in some other way, a member of an underserved community and privileged members of our society. There are a lot of things that COVID-19 um, pandemic has, has brought to our doorstep. But one of the things that it has done so clearly is reveal that these underlying conditions, these pre-existing conditions, these established and systematic inequities in our healthcare system are for many, many people, the most important fact about what it means to be healthy or sick in America today. It has shown us that the American medical system today is a pre-existing condition. You have come to the CUNY School of Medicine because it is different. All these years ago, the Sophie Davis program was established on this campus because it was necessary. It was necessary to establish a program that blended a commitment to primary care, a, a, a sense of the necessity of teaching cultural competencies, and a willingness to instill in its students and its graduates a desire to serve the most vulnerable members of our community in basic medical treatment. And if it was necessary these 50 some years ago, then it is more necessary today. And those of you that have worked in our hospitals that have seen the ravages of this pandemic must have brought to this graduation stage the burning sense of the unfairness of the way this virus has settled on our society. And so I say again that I'm here to charge you. I'm here to charge you to leave this campus and in your work and in your competency, in your willingness to listen to your patients, in your willingness to, to hear pain where others may ignore it or understand a symptom where others may simply hear a complaint, to bring the cultural competency and commitment to primary health care and underserved communities to your professional lives. And in doing that, as the first graduating class of the CUNY School of Medicine, establish a tradition that everyone who comes after you must live up to. If you can do that, if you can carve a pathway for other graduates of this medical school to follow, if you can set standards of conviction and commitment that others must follow when they leave here, if you can make it crystal clear to every applicant who ever fills out an application to come to this school why they've chosen this place to study medicine instead of some other place, then you will have done your job and you will have served the legacy of this great college and the legacy of this historic program and you will begin the necessary, the vital work of little by little changing the way we deliver healthcare in the United States. It is a heavy responsibility, but everything that's happened to you in your last seven years on this campus, in this school, prepares you for it. We are so confident in your ability to do this work. We are so proud of what you have demonstrated and what you will continue to demonstrate and so deeply dependent on the success of your efforts today, next month, next year, and all the days of your life. Congratulations, inaugural class of the CUNY School of Medicine. I can't tell you how proud we are of what you've done. Thank you. It is now um, my great pleasure and responsibility to introduce someone who's, who's uh, uh, like me, seen uh, City University from all different angles. Um, you may not know this, uh, 
but most colleges only get a chance to see the chancellor at graduation once or twice every four or five years. We have 25 institutions in the CUNY system, all graduating more or less simultaneously. And a judicious chancellor parcels out his or her appearances um, so that everybody gets a shot at their attention. 